Okay, so hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now, in today's video, we're going to be doing the third part for What If Naruto Had Hockey. And for all of you being like, wait, it's been like one week since you last uploaded. Didn't you say you were going to do like two uploads a week now that you're back? Well, first of all, um, uh, I didn't say I'm like full, fully like back to full like speed uploading yet. <clears throat> I mean, the whole like test preps thing is still going on soccer just ended today and basketball starting soon um and like this is the end of the first uh quarter in well my like school year so i'm getting a lot of tests which is normal i mean what am i gonna do about it um <laughs> end of quarter tests it's oh well but yeah Anyways, I, I said two, uh, two uploads a week, so technically I actually did two uploads last week, so, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, enough of that, make sure to subscribe and like, and, um, subscribe to my new ch second channel, which is Destructive Dolphin, and enjoy the video. So, last time we left off, um, Kakashi was just about to tell Team 7 about the tuning exams. I don't think I made him actually tell um, them yet. Yeah, I, I did. I don't think it. Anyway, um, yeah, Jiraiya tells all of them about the tuning exams. I tr oh my god, I can't speak. Look, I'm very tired. I've been doing homework for like an hour straight. Um, um, Kakashi tells them about the tuning exams and, um, asks them if they want to participate in the tuning exams, and for obvious reasons, they all say yes. And, um, they do get a week, uh, to train, and normally nothing really happens in this week, like, some, um, new characters are introduced or whatever, but nothing really happens in this one week of preparation that they do have for the tuning exams except this time naruto trains his conqueror's hockey and you might be like well how does he train his conqueror's hockey well two things um first of all he now has access to conqueror's hockey which is you know pretty pretty op um but he unlocked it in the land of waves against haku and second of all, he also has that book that Shanks gave him in like the beginning of the series. And using this book, he goes to the part about Conqueror's hockey. And this is like a, a full guide to like everything hockey, like every hockey skill that Shanks knows, um, it, it's in this book. Um, and just like everything shanks knows exists like it doesn't need to be even be something like shanks knows like how to do um as long as he knows it exists he probably put it in there like full body armament um i don't think shanks can do full body armament but he put it in there because he knows how it works uh anyway going off track naruto trains his conqueror's hockey in this one week and he makes he makes he makes some progress but yeah, anyway, um, so, yeah, that, that's the seven, that's, uh, that's the seven days, that's the week, and now it is time for them to enter the tuning exams, and, um, I mean, they're pretty well prepared, and so they enter the building, and of course, they all noticed the genjutsu, and, you know, they just kind of ignore it, and continue on and once again rock lee challenges sasuke with sasuke accepting the challenge and um you might be like oh but why is rock lee challenging um sasuke naruto actually um uh i mean beat sasuke in the spar but like still um sasuke got like student of the year getting of the year get I don't know what it's called, okay? Um, I forgot. But yeah, so like, 
Brock Lee still thinks Sasuke is the best. And once again, just like in the original, he kind of destroys Sasuke. But although, I, I must admit, the rules were kind of like rigged. Uh, just like, oh, you can't use jutsu. Like, <laughs> it's like going up to... Um, um, it's like being someone with the Rinnegan and going up to like a random person. I mean, like, fight me. But you can only use dojutsu. Like, that, how's that fair? You're going up to someone with no dojutsu and being like, yeah, fight my Rinnegan, but whatever. Uh, I could rant on about that for a while, but you probably do not want to hear that. So, um, yeah, so that happens. They enter the first part of the tuning exams, where Ibiki comes and he's like, oh, um, so yeah, test, do it. Uh, if you get caught cheating, you're out. And Naruto actually passes the first part because he's smart in this. I know, big surprise, but Naruto is actually smart in this. And if you don't like that explanation, I mean, first of all, yeah, he still would have gone like at least one and that's all you needed to pass. But even if you're not happy with that, there are other ways uh, Naruto could cheat in this, um, I guess, because, you know, he could kind of do, um, I mean, there are other ways he can cheat but yeah plus also uh even if no way works hinata in the original still offered to actually let uh, naruto copy off of her sheet and even if that doesn't happen turns out you don't even have to get any of the questions correct so naruto definitely passes this um and uh then ibiki says Oh, but actually, none of this mattered. It was all a uh, tactical deception, and and you you all got bamboozled. Um, yeah, I was just testing your cheating skills, uh, and everyone was like, "Oh, bro, is this guy serious?" But yeah, um, and he's like, "But now, time for the tenth question, the real question. If you get this wrong, you can never take the tuning exams ever again." And like everybody's like. Oh, um, yeah, I I'm not, I'm not doing this. So, most of them just leave. Um, they're like, yeah, this isn't, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm out. Uh, but the people who do stay, um, they pass. Because Ibiki is like, haha, you thought I wouldn't do it again, but I did. This question also didn't matter. I was just testing your bravery to stuff or something. No, like, what was it? He, uh, he was testing something. Um... But yeah, as he's explaining this, Anko jumps in through the window, sh like shattering the window, just like uh, jumps in, and he's like, everybody meet me at the forest of death for the second part of the tuning exams. And everyone's like, bro, what? And um, Ibiki's just like, Anko, there's a door for a reason. Like, why are you, why are you breaking in through the window of all places? But, uh, I mean, oh well. Uh, as Ango just kind of like ignores Ibiki uh, and keeps saying, Okay, come on, come on, you don't want to be eliminated, do you? Now go, go to the forest of death! And everyone's like, Oh, okay, okay, I don't want to be eliminated. I'm coming, I'm coming. Um, so yeah, they all go to the forest of death where um, Anko proceeds to explain um, how it works and um, the rules, how you get one scroll and you have to get the other. And everybody goes to their own starting section as Anko says go. And everybody runs in. Now, Naruto uh, uses his observation hockey uh, to start, well, trying to find other teams. But uh, use, while using his observation hockey, he senses a certain someone. And this certain someone's presence is just weird, right? Like, both with his chakra detection and using his observation in hockey, like, this person is, he can just tell, like, this is, like, not a person. Like, this, I, like, classifying this as a person just wouldn't make sense. It's just a weird, like, presence of sorts coming in their direction. And Naruto, although it not, um, like, although he doesn't want to die, I guess, because, well, of course, um, and he realizes this this opponent might be potentially dangerous, um, he just still decides that, well, I mean, these people are all genin anyway, so what's the worst that could happen? 
And the worst that could happen happens because this person happens to be Orochimaru as he comes out through uh, the trees and into a clearing as he does this whole like Sasuke thing. You know, he just like, st- like creepily stares at um, Sasuke. And now suddenly like everybody in the team just feels like this immense like pressure like this fear sort of thing just like it was um in the original uh you know how orochimaru used this ability of his uh to sort of stun everyone except this time it's different this power works slightly differently and um naruto and the rest of teams well actually first of all Sasuke and Naruto, Sasuke was like mostly like stunned, like he was having difficulty moving, and Naruto was like affected by this energy being like coming off of Orochimaru, although he's like, nothing really happened to him. Meanwhile, Sakura, being the useless person she is, kind of just like passed out the instant this um, Orochimaru used this ability, and something just felt similar about this uh to naruto and then it hit him orochimaru was using a pseudo version of um of conqueror's hockey well he doesn't realize this yet but he draws the connection that it sort of feels similar to that but he doesn't quite understand everything yet and the reason Orochimaru has this ability is because he is actually trying to get this hockey ability for himself. And Orochimaru, um, being the weird person who he is, who like combines like people's blood into other people to give them like special Keke Genkai, I mean, it only makes sense for him to um, have his own version of this well, as it is in this what if, Keke Genkai, um, and you know, he kind of just happened to have, like, Uzumaki blood lying around somewhere, I don't know, Orochimaru, he has, like, like, if anyone's gonna have a, a Uzum, uh, Uzumaki blood lying around somewhere, it's gonna be Orochimaru, so, yeah, it, it makes sense, okay, just, just, just deal with it, uh, um, Although I don't really think anybody had a problem with me giving Orochimaru this ability anyway, but sorry. Um, but Naruto and Orochimaru start fighting. And as the fight happens, Sasuke sort of recovers from his stunned state and also joins the battle. And this battle goes on for a while, with both Naruto and Sasuke going all, ra- all out around up, blah, against Orochimaru. And during this battle... Orochimaru is somewhat holding back, but still mostly destroying Sasuke and Naruto. And after getting tired of fighting, he sort of just, um, he sort of just, like, goes all out for, like, 10 seconds as he flings both Naruto and Sasuke to the side. But Sasuke, um, quickly recovers as being flung, he bounces using that uh, momentum off of the tree and flings right back at Orochimaru with just as much strength and they keep fighting and fighting and fighting but Orochimaru is heavily overpowering um, Sasuke and eventually through this uh, through this uh, constant fighting and this moment of stress forcing Sasuke to either evolve and uh, like, improve, adapt to the situation, or die, Sasuke unlocks the two Tomoe Sharingan. And at this moment, having uh, Naruto from the sidelines being watching Orochimaru fight and also implement his sort of, like, stun abilities um, into his fighting style, this is when he starts piecing everything together. He realizes that Orochimaru's version of Conqueror's Hockey isn't actually that strong, and it's just like a makeshift version, and it's like just a copy, I guess. It's not the actual thing, and 
the way it works is it just converts, um, well, sort of, in a simplified way. The way it works is it converts Orochimaru's bloodlust into a type of conqueror Saki, which is how he was able to do what he did earlier. And, um, uh, at this moment, we skip over to Anko, who, in the original, uh, had been searching for Orochimaru, but this time, she wasn't far too late, because in the original, she was, like, hours late, right, but this time, hearing all of, like, the stuff going on, all of the ruckus, she, like, she immediately realized this is not the sort of stuff that Genins are capable of, and also, um, recognize sort of, um, the, the, the Orochimaru's, like, chakra, and you might be like, wait, but wouldn't that mean that in the original, she was just, just, okay, just, just, just go along with it, and anyway, Anko was currently looking for, um, Orochimaru, as she was going through the trees, jumping around, looking, uh, for Orochimaru, following the faint trace of the chakra that could be traced, hoping that she wasn't too late. But in this moment, Naruto had rejoined the fight, trying to fight um, Orochimaru along with Sasuke, this time using all of his hockey abilities to defeat Orochimaru. And Orochimaru, realizing that he was um, actually starting to be pushed by these Genins, decided, huh, well, why don't I just resort to using my Conqueror's like, hockey again? I mean, it works every time. As um, Orochimaru goes to do this, but Naruto, seeing him prepare to use his ability again, says, huh, he fell right into my trap. As um, Orochimaru releases his version of Conqueror's hockey, but Naruto does the same. And almost in a smaller scale version of what happened uh i think it was like in the battle of like kaido versus uh, luffy i'm not sure like when the two like conquerors hockey almost like bubbles clashed with each other and it made like this crazy looking effect it's almost like that with both of their conquerors hockeys just like clashing against each other pushing against each other trying to see which one is on top of course on a smaller scale than uh luffy versus kaido but just the conquerors hockey pushing against each other trying to see which one is stronger as naruto gives all of his effort into just defeating orochimaru knowing that his conquerors hockey if he can use all of his conquerors hockey his is stronger than what Orochimaru has. After all, Orochimaru's is just a copy, a pseudo, like, like a pseudo conqueror's hockey, or like a, yeah, just a cheap copy of his. And using all of his strength, he's able to get, like, basically defeat Orochimaru's, like, um, conqueror's hockey as this pushes. Uh, like, basically blasts uh, Orochimaru back, because he's like, no, there's no way, no way I lose, as right before retreating, in a last-ditch effort, he extends his neck, going to bite Sasuke's, um, Sasuke's neck, and give him the curse mark, and Naruto tries to stop Orochimaru, but he can't, after using so much energy, I mean, he's tired, he isn't able to recover in time to get back and to get to Sasuke who's standing far further away from him as he realizes there's nothing he can do but in the fight the like last moment a kunai comes flying out of the air and hits Orochimaru's like extended neck right in the middle as Anko jumps down from the trees having to sense the huge like clash in conquerors hockey and immediately being able to pinpoint their location and coming right in time as you know kun uh she lands and just to be sure stabs three more kunai straight into 
Orochimaru's neck and kills Orochimaru. But, you know, we know it's not kills, because, like, come on, Orochimaru never dies. Uh, like, he dies sometimes, but even when he does die, he doesn't really die. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's Orochimaru in a nutshell. But, yeah, um, Orochimaru is dead. And Naruto realizes that uh, Orochimaru also happened to have the scroll they were looking for. And... I mean, Onko's like, okay, I mean, I guess you pass. You kind of just beat Orochimaru there, sort of. Not really, like, with my help, obviously. Uh, but good job. Uh, you're definitely above getting level, so you pass. And also, you got the two scrolls, so good job. And, um, you know, they wait for everybody else to finish the second part. And... Um, and after that, realizing that too many people passed, the proctor is like, oh, we're going to have preliminaries. But Naruto doesn't have much trouble in the preliminaries. So, I mean, I guess I can go over it. Kiba uses the fang over fang. Like, he has no other ability. But Naruto kind of just gets out the way and is able to, like, dodge the attack. And uh, after that, he, like, after, I mean, I feel like the Fang over Fang sort of has, like, a cooldown. It's, like, a charge attack, and then it has a cooldown. I mean, not really, but, like, um, he waits for uh, Kiba to finish his attack and just goes for, like, an armaments hockey, like, fist punch straight to uh, Kiba's face and knocks Kiba out in one punch. And no, he's not one punch man, he's just happened to knock Kiba out in one punch in that one example uh but yeah uh that's that's kind of how the preliminaries go that's the only thing that changes and yeah yeah that's the only I'm not gonna change anything else um yeah so this is when they get their one month break one month break uh to uh, the one month uh the one month uh break uh, it's the, oh my god. This is when they get their one month break to train for the final part of the tuning exams. Thank you, I can, I, I can speak now. Uh, yeah. But, during this break, Naruto, uh, decides to go to the hot springs to, you know, take a break. And on his way to the hot springs, he sees Jiraiya. And, uh, you know, is doing his research um but naruto's like yo you gotta stop doing your <clears throat> research and um jiraiya's like do you know who i am i'm jiraiya the toad sage the legendary sign um and then he looks at naruto and he's like wait a second is that naruto and um jiraiya offers to train naruto and, I mean, Naruto says, okay, whatever, this guy's Sonin, um, at least claims to be, I'll, I'll, I'll see, I'll see, I'll see what he wants to teach me. And, first, Jiraiya kind of asks, uh, Naruto to, like, see what Naruto can do, just to, just to test him. And, Naruto shows him his hockey abilities, and Jiraiya just kind of smirks, saying, <laughs> that's what I thought, as Naruto says, Wait, you know about hockey? And Jiraiya says, huh. um, This is going to take a lot of explaining. As he sits back and sort of tells um, Naruto, well, without saying too much, he's like, So I happen to know a few people who also had this hockey ability. Um, Totally not your uh, mom and dad. Oh, no, not, not your dad, because like, that's... Uh, not Mikaze, whatever, totally not your mom, uh, like, I totally, I'm not talking about your mom, or, like, your parents that you've never met, just, I happen to know a few people who happen to have hockey abilities, uh, totally not related to you in any way, shape, or form, um, but yeah, uh, Naruto's like, uh, okay, I guess, um, and doesn't question it, because plot, uh, and so Naruto, train uh J jiraiya 
trains Naruto. And what Jiraiya teaches Naruto is actually armament flow. And um, he generally teaches, yeah, the whole thing where Naruto learns how to bring the armament hockey like outside of his body like i don't know how to explain it you you guys know what armament flow is it's like um yeah it's 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 the thing right um and that's what jiraiya teaches naruto and um during this one month training period uh kind of like kind of like the old training um arc that luffy had where he learned armament hockey he learns armament uh oh not armament hockey armament armament flow and that stuff and yeah um but that's what dry teaches him dry also teaches him sort of like how to master some of the other techniques that he currently has um that sort of stuff but not like not much more than that but it's this is like a pretty good experience for naruto because like Gets to learn some new abilities and refine his old ones. Yeah, pretty good. And with that, Naruto heads off to the final part of the Chunin exams. But you guys already know what I'm going to say. That is where I'm going to be having to end off this video. Um, yeah. Please, please remember to like and subscribe. And I will see all of you next time.